Welcome to my presentation on the important passages from Act 1 of Death of a Salesman. Our first passage starts right with the opening lines of the play. Willie says, it's all right, I came back. Why, what happened? A slight pause. Did something happen, Willie? No, nothing happened. You didn't smash the car, did you? If you examine these opening lines, you'll find a lot of clues to what will happen later on in the play. So you have Linda being concerned that Willie has turned up um, unexpectedly. And in a normal situation, the first thing you would say is not, did you smash the car? Um, so it's kind of a foreshadowing to what will happen later on in the play. And then I also identified that you have epanalypsis with the sentence that begins with you and ends with you. Um, just to point out that even though we're not reading Shakespeare or um, Cyrano, authors, contemporary authors use the same syntactical devices throughout their work. I'm tired to the death. The flute has faded away. He sits on the bed beside her, a little numb. I couldn't make it. I just couldn't make it. There's a lot of repetition in this play, and when things are repeated, it's a sign to pay attention. The author is trying to focus us on something that's important. So Willie is the first one in the play to mention the word death, which is in the title of the play. Um, and so the author is keying us into a theme or main idea. And when he says, I just couldn't make it, I just couldn't make it, Linda, part of his problem, as Linda will say um, later on in the play, is that he's tired. He's tired beyond words. But he's not just physically tired. He's emotionally and psychologically tired of dealing with some issues or trying to repress some issues that have been um, on his mind. Willie says, I don't want change. I want Swiss cheese. Why am I always being contradicted? This little passage has two important elements in it. One is that Willie is a man who needs everything to stay the same. But life doesn't work like that. Change is coming, and he's going to have to face change. The question is, is he going to be able to deal with the change and adapt, or is he going to be unable to deal with the change? And it uh, seems like a small thing, but it's going to go to the heart of this tragedy as we um, move into Act 2. And then he says, why am I always being contradicted? It's kind of ironic because Willie is the one who often contradicts himself. Other people don't necessarily contradict him. He contradicts himself more than anybody else in the play. Willie says, there's more people. That's what's ruining the country. Population is getting out of control. The competition is maddening. Smell the stink from that apartment house and another one on the other side. How can they whip, how can they whip cheese? Okay, so we have a couple of different things right here. Um, Willie is definitely feeling the pressure um, of having to make a living in our society, a capitalist society that's built on competition. We always say competition is great for the economy, but those people who have to slog it out day to day, constantly feeling like if they don't measure up, they're going to... Um, sink, they're going to get crushed. For Willie, he says it's maddening, it's making him crazy. And for those of us who think that maybe Willie is going a little crazy, this is a very telling word. Then he says, um, how do they, how can they whip cheese? And this is a non sequitur. Willie often moves from one topic to another 
without warning. So he's back thinking about the cheese um, after he's had this a little emotional outburst, and he will have a lot of outbursts and non sequiturs throughout the play. I sit in my apartment, this is from Happy, all alone, and I think of the rent I'm paying, and it's crazy, but then it's what I always wanted, my own apartment, a car, and plenty of women, and still, God damn it, I'm lonely. So, Happy here, we know that his name is ironic, because by the time we get to the end of this quote, we know that this is a man who doesn't seem happy at all. He has everything that he says he wanted as a young man. He has an apartment, his own place, which is a sign of independence, a car, the American, American icon of freedom, and plenty of women because he's young, he's single. He wants to be able to, uh, you know, date whoever he wants. But there's something hollow, something empty about his American dream that ultimately is not fulfilling. The things he always thought he wanted turn out to be kind of meaningless. And deep down inside, he knows it. And that's why he's lonely, because he's not completely fulfilled by the acquisition of the things he wants. One of my students also said that um, this goes to the feminist interpretation because he's acquiring women just the way he acquires things. Um, and women are almost like disposable items in our society. Okay, so if you're thinking about the feminist interpretation, you, you have some evidence here. Biff says, and it's a measly manner of existence to get up on, to get on that subway on a hot, on hot, on the hot mornings in summer to devote your whole life to keeping stock or making phone calls or selling or buying to suffer 50 weeks of the year for the sake of a two-week vacation when all you really desire is to be outdoors with your shirt off and always to have to get ahead of the next fella and still that's how you build a future so this is really Biff looking at his life and what's and how he sees the society and why he isn't happy or satisfied in society. So he says, um, to devote your whole life to keeping stock and making phone calls and selling and buying. That's basically what he's describing is Willie's life to suffer 50 weeks of the year for the sake of a two week vacation. He finds that the American paradigm of the working life to be unacceptable. And he doesn't want to get trapped in it. So he sees maybe that his father has been trapped in it all his life. And he doesn't want it. He says, when all you really desire is to be outdoors with your shirt off. That's the kind of life he's been living out in the West, working on a ranch. But now... He feels like he has to come home and try Willie's life, but deep inside, he knows that it's not going to work for him. Um, and this, of course, is a sign of internal conflict. It's also a sign of man versus society. He doesn't want to fit into society's mold. And, and finally, he says, and still, that's how you build a future. And the question for us is, Fitting into this mold, is that really the only way to build a future? Or is there another way to have the American dream? Happy says, sure, the guy's in line for the vice presidency of the store. I don't know what gets into me. Maybe I just have an overdeveloped sense of competition or something. But I went and ruined her. And furthermore, I can't get rid of her. And he's the third executive I've done that to. Isn't that a crummy characteristic? And on, and to top it all, I go to their weddings. Now, this is one of the most um, revealing passages in the play to um, a character's inner workings. When he says that he's in... Um, he basically has an overdeveloped sense of competition. We see that 
fact, in the flashbacks, he's always trying to vie for his parents' attention and never really getting the attention he needs. And so he's developed this um, sense of competition with every man out there, especially those who are in authority over him. He kind of wants to be able to show that he's as good or better than they are. And if he can't do it on the job, he does it by dating their girlfriends because he is a physically attractive man who can get all the girls he wants. So he, he dates their girlfriends. He sleeps with their girlfriends. This is in 1949 when most women were expected to be virgins when they got married. And he deliberately um, sleeps with them. It's a way of psychologically striking out at the people who are in authority over them. It's a way of showing aggression towards those you resent without actually being aggressive. And psychologists call that being passive aggressive. So he wants, he's, he's uh, under everything, he's really a very angry man. But he doesn't show it. Um, he acts out negatively. And so when he says, isn't that a crummy characteristic? Psychologically, he knows that he's doing something that's really reprehensible um, because he's using the girls. He's trying to humiliate the men. He's debasing himself. There's nothing positive about his behavior. And then when he says, I go to their wedding, it's as though he goes and he gloats about the terrible thing that he's done. It's like an arsonist who shows up and watches the fire after he set the house on fire. All right. Willie. Don't say. Tell you a secret, boys. Don't breathe it to a soul. Someday I'll have my own business and I'll never have to leave home anymore. So Willie is sharing in a flashback, this is something from the past, with a boy that he had a dream and his dream was to have his own business. We should immediately think, well, it's many years later, almost 20 years later, and there's no sign that Willie was ever able to make his dream come true, materialize his desire, and how, what does it feel like to work your whole life and then not have the dream come true. <clears throat> Willie says, that's just what I mean. Bernard can get the best marks in school, you understand. But when he gets out in the business world, you understand, you are going to be five times ahead of him. That's why I thank Almighty God you're both built like Adonis's because the man who makes an appearance in the business world, the man who creates personal interest, is the man who gets ahead. Be liked and you'll never want. You take me, for instance, I never have to wait in line to see a buyer. Willie Loman is here. That's all you have to know. And I go right through. So this passage has so many different elements to it. First of all, he's criticizing Bernard because Bernard is a nerd. Bernard is bookish and he's definitely not the kind of guy that all the girls are running after and he's not someone you look at and say, oh, I want to make him leader of something because in school he's a nerd. And Willie is assuming that if he's a nerd, he's always going to be a nerd, which is a false assumption. The real world doesn't necessarily work like that. If you're captain of the football team, doesn't mean they're going to make you president of some company. Um, he says, that's why I think almighty God's God that you're built like Adonis is. <clears throat> that's a mythological allusion to a handsome young man of mythology that one of the goddesses fell in love with. And we have, uh, he says, because the man who makes an appearance, Willie is concerned with outward appearance. If you look good, you must be good. If the facade is appealing, if the advertisement is bright and beautiful, the product must be great. And in a logical world, we know that's not true. Just because somebody is attractive on the outside doesn't mean they're attractive on the inside. And that 